ago until May 16th, and uh, uh, a review from a more authoritative source, we've, we've heard stuff from IMDb, but now we have a review of 45 minutes of Prince Casting from MSN, which is a much more reliable source than the Incorrect Movie Database, and so uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of the interesting things that have come up. A, a lot of it is uh, just kind of you know, a more clear explanation of things we've already heard, and then, of course there's a lot of beautiful quality pictures that are up that we're, we're going to take a look at too. Uh, first off, uh, the opening of the movie, which uh, I'm people I, IMDb I talked about, is indeed Caspian um, uh, fleeing the castle. Uh, obviously, a departure from the book. Uh, that's the opening scene, and uh, they say that the reviewer says that, that that there's a chase scene and that it's more dramatic than most of wardrobe. How do you feel about that as an opening scene? Well, I mean, it should capture the audience's attention, so cinematically, it's great. But yeah. yeah. I'm all right with it as a fan. Yeah, um, I actually, the thing this does, and we're, uh, I'm assuming that they're going to open it, that they're going to have the chase scene, and then uh, Caspian decides to blow the horn, and he blows the horn because he's pursued by Telmarine, which he isn't in the book, but he's going to um, blow the horn, transition to the Pevensies, and there's a, you know, a few minutes with them, and then they're whisked off to Narnia. Uh, the thing this is going to do is it's going to take away from the mystery. Uh, in the book, uh, they're, they're whisked off to Narnia, we have no idea why, and they, they don't even really understand why until Trumpkin finishes his story, like, you know, six ch chapters later. And, um... Is it four? It, well, it, the story is four chapters long, with there's some chapters before that. So it's like, well, yeah, a, a Trumpkin tells a four-chapter story and then before they, they figure out um, why, why they were there. So there's kind of a mystery of it. And, oh, they don't even know it's Care Prairie Bella first. And uh, this would kind of take away from the mystery of not knowing why they came to Narnia. And then one of my favorite moments in the series and uh, is when they piece it together. And, oh, Susan Horn, you know, that it makes sense. So uh, that, that's one downside to this. Uh, the good part of this is that it's going to establish a connection between Caspian and the Pevensies because he has the horn. Uh, 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 hopefully most people will recognize the horn from the first film, or at the very least it's a lion. You know, it's something. And I blow it, so that establishes a connection. And if you watch my 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 sixth video, my uh, video number six about the flashback problem, um, then you'll see where I talked. That was one of my main concerns was establishing a connection between Caspian and the Pevensies. Um, and then uh, presumably they'll do this. Uh, they're going to tell the story pretty much chronologically, at least in the beginning, as far as Caspian blowing the horn. Then we go to the Pevensies. But then, of course, um, how much are they going to? It, they still it still seems like they're gonna have to do some stuff in flashback if they want to go over uh some of the stuff with Caspian and Cornelius you know on the tower and stuff beforehand it seems like the only way to do that would be to do that in flashback so maybe Trumpkin still will um fill in some of the blanks in flashback I think that since the opening of the movie uh begins is gonna begin with such a like a dramatic chase scene where a connection is established between Caspian and the Pevensies, I think people will be more willing to go along for the ride. And uh, even though it might be kind of strange to speak or start this story in the middle of a movie, people might be more willing to go along with it, since that was a big... How do you think Caspian thing. escapes? Do, do like, uh, Truffle Hunter, Nickerbrick, and Trumpkin run out and help him? Yeah, I think that uh, it could be argued that the horn, uh, the way they're doing it in the movie, it could be argued that the, uh, the result of the horn is two things. It calls the Pevensies, of course... And it calls uh, Truffle Hunter, uh, Trumpkin, Nickerbrick, and presumably uh, Trumpkin is captured right there. I'm not sure if Trumpkin, if they're going to actually show him being captured there or not. Um, but, you know, so, so like a lot of changes, there's an upside and there's a downside, you know, to what, what they're doing. But it still seems like some flashbacks will be required. Uh, the reviewer talks about how Peter hasn't adjusted to living back in the real world. That's something one of the production vlogs mentioned uh, so, like last, sometime last year. It was a long time ago. About that, about them, how it was a difficult year for them when they weren't in Narnia, and um, and he's eager to prove he's the rightful uh, ruler of the land. It's not really something I ever sensed from the book, but he did say that it came across as more subtle than more moviegoers would expect, which I think is encouraging. But I think what's most interesting is he says Adamson says that all ties into why Peter and Susan realize this will be their last visit to Narnia. I find that very interesting. Um, because I've, I've always heard it said and agree that the best kind of ending is surprising but inevitable. I think that's what the ending is with Susan in Last Battle. Surprising at first, and even heartbreaking, and uh, it is bad, but then when you think about it, and especially when you reread the series, you realize that's the only, that was so inevitable. That was going to happen. Like, that's the only way you could, that her character arc could end. It, <laughs> that had to happen to Susan in the end. There was no other way to end it. And, um... So uh, I, I like the idea of Peter and Susan realizing, you know, or maybe realizing that they, they've grown up and they need to move on instead of just being told that. I think that's kind of, that's an interesting 
way of doing it in the movie. Overall, his verdict is that the movie is an improvement, which it seems like a good sign, although we haven't seen a review from someone who's a diehard fan of the book yet. But uh, it seems like, you know, on IMDb and on here, it's agreed that Prince Caspian is an improvement over Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So that's, you know, encouraging. Which is comforting, but I, I, um, I, stay, well, I still won't like it if it's not loyal to the book. Yeah, we'll see what they do. Uh, there's a lot of very high quality pictures on Arnie Webb. There's some of the highest quality pictures I've ever seen uh, from the film. And uh, very high resolution. And let's talk about the, the first one here. This first one here is uh, Susan about to shoot an arrow. What do you think is going on here? I think she's attacking a town marine, actually. Because, you know, later on... In the middle of nowhere? Okay. Well, I mean, these aren't exactly what we're going to see in the movie, so the person could have just shot her from the side when she's going... Mm. In, for, in front uh, of the, the town marine. Possibly the shooting match? I mean, it, it could have moved the shooting match to somewhere else in the movie. Um, uh, the next picture, you've got uh, Susan... Uh, going, my hero. That's what it looks like. She's looking up at someone, uh, Caspian, we can assume. <laughs> and uh, you definitely look at this as, like, dreamy eyes, you know. And uh, that's definitely... It's hard to believe this romance thing might actually happen. Maybe it's going to be subtle, but it's hard to believe that we posted this as an April Fool's joke. And it's almost like they took us seriously. It's like, no, we were joking. We didn't really want you to do that. Oh. Uh, then you've got, ugh, Caspian and Susan on horseback here. And... In the end, all of this is going to come down to how the actors play it. I mean, you look at the next next picture right here of uh, Susan being rescued oh, by Caspian, which is, that's really the thing I don't like, is that just seems very my hero and everything like he's saying, and, and you're just Hollywoodish and everything. Oh. So, um, yeah, so it's... Well, at least it's just, it makes her less fierce. Yeah, mm. I guess so. Does the job. Really dumb. Uh, so, but in the end, it's going to go... But I must say, I only felt negative about these pictures here after I thought about it. My first thought was maybe it's Caspian trying to be just trying to be a gentleman, you know. That's what I'm hoping it's gonna be, not any kind of love interest. I would hate that, and on every but level. Again, you shouldn't just let somebody out of your fairy tales who's just appeared get chopped up by a town marine. Oh yeah, I mean, but they don't have to make that change. They don't have to put that scene in at all, and uh, very difficult to kind of get a sense of the timeline here of the sequence that events happen, you know. So. Uh, Oh, and here's Trumpkin. Yeah, uh, new image, of, new image of Trumpkin. Uh, but this is the ultimate revelation of Trumpkin. I think you really see him. He looks more similar to that concept art that was with my fourth report than uh, I thought he would look. And he looks okay. Once again, older than I imagined, and it's just something a little bit well, Ryan, weird about him. Well, everybody's supposed to look older from what I've heard. Right. Everything. There's something a little bit odd about Trumpkin. I can't really tell what it is and the way his makeup is done. I just always picture him fakey. with a really red beard. That's yeah. my only complaint. Besides that, I love him. Yeah. Great I guess so. Well, it kind of looks like Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, but I'll let it yeah. slide. I gotta say, overall, there were some negative things from these reports, but um, I have this tingly feeling in my stomach that Prince Caspian's gonna be great. I can't. I don't really know why, but I just have. I, I, yeah, there's. Uh, it's obvious there's gonna be some annoying changes, but there were some really annoying changes with Lord of the Rings as well. But you take a step back like and look, what? like uh, Frodo sending Sam away. Like, uh, f uh, far well, Mar Faramir Gilead, Aragorn going over the cliff, the elves at Helm's Deep. There were a lot of things that made me go, oh, but step well, back. Well, I mean, sending Sam away. This isn't a Lord of the Rings, it's not a Lord of the Rings block. But, well, uh, you step back and look at the overall product and you say, Jackson got it. You know, he got what makes Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings. You know, he, he got it. And, time. and, uh, no, we have time. And, uh, because we can go up to five minutes there. Um, so, um... I, I have a feeling that even though there are going to be some annoying changes with Prince Caspian, base, I just get, have this feeling in my stomach that it, it is going to be overall, that it's going to be great. And so obviously, I'm feeling good about the movie now. I'm not ready really to good. agree with you. But even though, obviously, there are going to be some annoying changes. Uh, one last note, uh, I wor l got the idea very late at night the other day to make a trailer for Prince Caspian, or for 300, using images from Prince Caspian, or the other way around, however you want to say it. And uh, so I, I stayed up all night and, and did it. I've kind of been waiting for someone to make a 300 version of the Prince Caspian trailer since it came out. So he just made it himself. Right. Then I'm going to inc include that as a video response to this. And so uh, check that out. You know, just yeah, I think right time. something I worked on. But 77 days to go. This is not yet! <laughs> Stand!